Hi all, and uh, I always like learning about new athletes and how they perform and how they put out outstanding performances. And I learned a new thing about uh, Tommy Smith, who performed and won the gold medal in the Mexico Olympics in 1968. Now, it's remembered for his black power salute on the victory podium of, of the 200 metres. But for me, I want to concentrate on the actual performance of him in the 200 metres, because that should be as just, well, not as, as seminal, but it should be remembered as a great sprinting performance. And it's often forgotten in terms of... Of, of what the actual victory meant. But in terms of getting that performance was really, really outstanding. And what it, the actual, what you had to go through. In the semi-final, he ran actually on the day of the final, he had to run the semi-final to qualify into the final. So you had the morning heats so or semi-final and then the final in the evening. And he ran the 200 meter semi-final in the morning and he won it, but he crossed the line and tweaked his groin. So he, he added an injury and he did it as he, he was slowing down over the, the, the finishing line. and. He, it was as bad enough for him to start limping off the track. So he had the injury and what Bud Winter, his coach, did was iced it, did the usual thing, tried to actually get it to recover and numb it. But that injury was not going to get better for him in the evening. So he did run the final. Uh, for what reasons, I'm not entirely sure. To, um, I couldn't find that out. But he, obviously it was the Olympic final. It was really, really important. So it, the, the gamble was made. And but he had a, he had the injury, so he couldn't go full out in that that um, that uh, that race. Not at all. If you can imagine coming out of the blocks, you need to exert a lot of power, and it takes a lot of it look, puts a lot of stress on the muscles to generate the power out of the blocks. Now, what's significant? A bit of backstory. Bud Winter is his coach, and Bud Winter is like the pioneer of relaxed sprinting. He kind of he not he not only brought. Tommy Smith and John Carlos, who are excellent sprinters and record holders in themselves, but he, he, he actually he sprinted or coached many other world record holders and sprinters. And he was the pioneer of relaxed sprinting. He taught them how to do nine tenths sprinting instead of all, all out sprinting and showed how much quicker you go at going nine tenths of an effort instead of all out sprinting. So he, the backstory is they had that kind of coaching behind him, but in the final, he was handicapped by injury. He had to be relaxed in that, and he had to make sure that his mind was actually on his running and not allowing the injury to come. Because if you're a sprinter, you know the fact of you running with injury and you start to sprint on it, it's gonna get worse. But he didn't allow that to happen, although the injury. Now, and as I said before, coming out of the blocks, when you, it, you know, it puts a lot of strain on the muscles to generate that power. So what he did was actually make sure they cut back on the power. He cut back on the actual, the intensity of coming out of the blocks. And you'll find in this, as you watch the race, he's actually well behind his, his training mate and his rival, John Carlos, in the first hundred. He's going very conservatively because he can't. Generating that power and coming up to speed, well, that's when the injury is more likely to happen. But as he comes into the home straight, he starts to gain, gain, gain. And because of the, lack, the fact that the relaxation was so much of a priority in the first part of the race, he, acceler he didn't accelerate, but he slowed down slower than the rest. And he opened up his stride and he just went past like John Carlos, his rival, who was, got, he was winning the race like he wasn't there. And he opened up and he cantered across the line and he broke the world record and did 1983. Now, what's significant, he not only broke the world record, he cantered across the line, significant. It's akin to what Usain Bolt did in 2008 in celebration after 100 meters. He just cantered across the line. But John Carlos wasn't so, so much different. He was cantered across the line and with his hands aloft like this. He won the race easily with an injury and he smashed the, the, the world record. He was the first person officially to go under 20 seconds. So that is the amazing thing of how much relaxation does, how much you pulling back the effort. It's such a learning lesson. That race of what he did should be a litmus test for the for, for all sprinters of how to run the race. He had to do it by default to actually pull back the effort, but he did it and it, it worked in his favour. So that injury might have actually been a, a blessing in disguise for him to really pull back the effort and pull back them and concentrate on relaxation. But... Uh, that world record, I think, lasted for 11 years after that. Another, it, it just shows how significant that performance was. So when you're a sprinter, what can you learn from that? Well, the fact is, pull back the effort in your sprinting. Try it out in training. If you've got reps and doing reps with your training mates, you know, just concentrate on relaxation, pulling back the effort. Don't try to sprint all out. That will not do you any good. You will tighten up. You will tighten up. So you shouldn't ever sprint full out. But Winter says that it should be about nine tenths sprinting. I'd even go less than that, seven and eight, 
seven out of 10 sprinting, eight out of 10 sprinting in terms of effort. I'd go and try that out. And then you actually start to learn. All out sprinting, you don't really learn anything but to tighten up. But when you actually learn, pull back the sprinting and put it relaxation, you learn how it should feel to run well and it should feel good to, to sprint, should feel good to run. And that can only come by relaxation. So going back to seven out of 10 effort, eight out of 10 effort, just in your sprinting, even if you full sprint work, will do you the power of good. Pull back the effort and you'll find you'll shock yourself. You might get it wrong the first time, but you'll be able to tweak and change and actually learn a bit and actually change it. And see, you'll, you'll shock yourself at the, where you are with your mates it's when you actually do that, when you actually pull back the effort that much, that much more. And you'll find you actually be up with your training mates. It's that significant. It's really shocking how you do that. So really learn from what Tommy Smith did in that. By default, you had to pull back the effort in the, in the final of 200 metres, broke the world record by concentrating on relaxation. You can do the same. Try it out in your training and that, so you can actually bring it into your racing. The thing about racing is when you're sprinting, it's all about releasing the pressure. It's not about putting in more effort. The pressure is the one thing that will slow down athletes in the most important race. You bring relaxation is you're preventing pressure from slowing you down and you want to concentrate on things that will slow you down. So hopefully that video was helpful for you. Please like, please share.